Volumetric lights are crucial to get better graphics for your game, but not enough people know how to use them in Unity. So in this video, we're going to check out volumetric lighting in Unity 2019 using HDRP or High Definition Render Pipeline and see how you can use them in your games most efficiently. And before we get started with the video, I just want to quickly mention that this video is brought to you by Simmer.io. Simmer.io is a website where you can upload your Unity games. It's incredibly easy to use as you can register on the website and deploy your game as a WebGL game in Unity, then you just have to drag and drop the WebGL folder into Simmer and that is literally it. Something else I stand behind with Simmer personally is how they support deploying your game onto other platforms too. So you can focus your time on making the best game possible instead of focusing on deploying to the web. Because once your game is on Simmer, embedding on another site is a simple copy paste. Simmer is also a very fast platform, so no matter where in the world you're players are located, they won't suffer from long loading times. Using Simmer is also completely free and the creator Rocco wants to enable monetization for you to monetize your work and get paid for it. We also have an affiliate link set up with Simmer, so by going to the link in the description of this video or simply to the one on screen right now which is simmer.io forward slash saiku, you can join Simmer and start posting your games right now. Also, first 20 people to register with the link in the description will get access to a four hour long Udemy course valued at $119, which is for mastering Unity and WebGL. So with that being said, open up Unity and let's hop into it. All right, so here we are. We have Unity 2019 open. It's exactly the version is 2019.1.0 beta one. So if you guys want to use the same version, feel free to, but as long as you have HDRP or high definition render pipeline set up for your project, you're good to go. Now you might be asking yourself, how do you actually get HDRP set up to your project? So there are a couple of ways. Actually, let me say three, because number one, you can watch my video, the beginner's guide to HDRP self-promotion. I know, <laughs> or basically TLDR, you can go into window in an existing project and then get into the package manager and then browse down in here until you find the high definition render pipeline and then you can simply install this or in unity hub when you're creating a new project you can pick template from 3d to be high definition rp so now let's say you have hdrp set up and you have a scene set up as well and by the way just to quickly mention i'm using a few assets from the asset store but if you guys want to check these out you can basically go to the links in the description so once you've got hdrp into your project all you have to do is first and foremost you want to go to edit and then enter the project settings and let me actually maximize this a little bit so basically we we are interested in going to the file the scriptable render pipeline settings asset file so if you don't know the location of it in the projects tab you can basically hit it once and it's going to highlight it in the project tab so i can now close the project settings window and go to the asset file and in here we need to make sure that volumetrics are enabled or is enabled because it's a single option and i usually enable high quality too just because it's hdrp it's a triple a kind of like trying to look AAA, right? So why not just enable it? So just make sure volumetrics, especially the only pretty much the only crucial setting in here is enabled. And that is under the render pipeline supported features. After we've done that, we need to have a scene settings game object. And in my case, this object is called volume settings. And the most important part about this is the fact that we have a volume script on this game object and if you guys didn't know you can basically go into game object and go down to rendering and then spawn a new scene settings game object in case you're just starting out you have a new scene and you don't have the volume settings or scene settings game object in it but yeah so i have it here and what we're gonna do here we're gonna go into visual environment the sub component and make sure that for fog type we need to have it enabled and it has to be on volumetric fog. So make sure it's not on exponential fog because I think it's the default option when you create this. So make sure you go here and make sure you hit the volumetric fog for this. And then we're also gonna pick add component overrides and make sure we add a volumetric fog component here. And we can browse down a little bit and let's also hit all so that we enable all of these settings in here. So for now, I'm gonna leave all of these settings as they are and we're gonna focus on the direct directional light in our scene now. So we're gonna get started by basically just using the directional light to make sure we add some kind of like fog into our scene. 
And then after that, we can also add some more volumetric lighting using other types of lights and shapes of lights using Unity. So we're basically in this light component here, we're just gonna go to volumetric and make sure that it is enabled. And once again, for this as well, we're just gonna leave the options like they are right now because we have another game object to create before we actually get to see the volumetrics. And that is the fog itself, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to game object and in here we wanna go into rendering and then pick density volume. So density volume is basically the game object which spawns the volume of fog, right? And the thing is, when we actually add this into our scene, you can see that we don't see any kind of fog or any volumetrics, right? And that is because it's volume, meaning that it's supposed to be in the zone. So basically this object is a zone itself, right? So you can basically extend it, you can expand it, and you can move it around. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move it back a little bit towards the tractor and just kind of make sure that it is in our zone. And you can see that when we move it in front of the tractor, you can see a kind of like a volume of fog, which looks pretty nice. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the scale button right here so the first button and after you hit it you're gonna see these kind of like pivot points which you can start moving and the good thing is this is going to maintain its cubic form so as you go as you expand you'll just see like an intensity increase in terms of fog and you can feel free to expand this as much as you want to or you can use smaller cubes of density volumes in order to create areas of different effects so what I usually do is for volume I often just enable advanced and just feel free to modify the blend distance so as we go you'll realize that the intensity is kind of decreasing and you can then just copy and paste this value into the into the two other axes as well all right there we go so I think this is starting to look pretty good and you can see that it's coming from the direction of the directional light so what we can do here is I can change the single scattering albedo color for the fog itself so we can go kind of like a little bit of yellowish like this right if we wanted to so then we can also go into our volume settings game object and in here we can also change the color of the albedo for the single scattering if we wanted to we can set more options like base fog distance base height basically where it starts in terms of the y-axis and we can set the mean height which controls the rate of the fall off for the height fog which i'm actually reading the tooltip as i go and we can use global and and what is it called anisotropy i don't know i i actually have no idea how you pronounce that basically this option <laughs> so the first slider is kind of like how I, I guess how smooth the halo is for the fog itself. So how much is actually depending on the light source, relatively speaking, compared to how much it spreads out through the scene. I usually have this pretty high up like here so that we can actually see the skybox instead of just a completely white kind of fog in the background. And the max fog distance setting actually enables you the option to set this to a custom value like five to make sure that all the objects are actually affected by this fog, but not so much the skybox. So if I set it to be five, it's almost completely transparent on the skybox, whereas 50 actually gives it this kind of like realistic color, whereas 500 is a little bit more dense. So let's actually keep this at 50. And you can also enable distant fog, which according to the tooltip, activates the fog with pre-computed lighting behind the volumetric lit frustrum. So now if we move our, or rather rotate our directional light, you can see that the fog is also real time. So we can like rotate this a little bit if we wanted like this. And you can see that the fog kind of just like follows the rotation and actually comes from the directional light. So what I really like about this system is the fact that it's not just like a regular kind of volumetric lighting system, but it's more like there's already fog in the scene and you can enable your lights light sources to contribute to that. But so let's say you wanted now to add a different light source into your scene, one more light object. So you can go into game object, go into light, and let's say this one is just gonna be a regular spotlight. So let's move this down a little and move it towards the tractor. And you can already see the volumetric fog effect from the light just because if we actually go to the spotlight object, 
and unfold volumetric, you will realize that volumetric is enabled by default. So that's why you're gonna start seeing volumetric fog coming out of this thing. So we can just like rotate this a little bit and you can just see that it looks very pretty. So we can modify all of our settings as we wish to. And if you wanted to disable volumetric for this, you can just hit enable and it's going to disable the volumetric fog effect for this light source specifically. All right, so that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and found it helpful. If you did and wanna see more, make sure to give this video a thumbs up to show some support and hit the subscribe button below the video to stay up to tune for new videos. As a matter of fact, I'm planning to do more graphics and HDRP or high definition render pipeline related videos. So if you guys are interested, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions and if you have any features you would like to see or anything like that. Also, for those of you who didn't know, we do have a Discord server for this community, which you can join by going to discord.gg forward slash polyrealm or simply by going to the link in the description. We're basically a server with over 10,000 members at this point, I think. I mean, I'm like never sure about the number, but basically we're 10,000 plus people that are like-minded, who like to chat, who like to have fun, you know, talk about game dev and showcase our projects, talk about Unity and stuff like that. So if you have any questions, if you need any help, you can always drop in and just like ask for help real time. And guys, before ending the video, I would also like to thank our Patreons for all of their support. That includes Richard Stance, Kupla, Flu Joey, Buterdie, MakeAGame.com, CouchFerret, Glasswell Entertainment, AcademyOfGames.com, TerrorRift.com, and John Funnel Grid. Thanks to your support on Patreon, I'm able to make more videos. So now, I'm not gonna take any more of your time. <laughs> I know you guys are busy, but I will, however, be super active in the comments section and in our Discord server. So, thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the comments and in our Discord. So, peace out, and have a good night. Çek bir duman bana dön bunu haritadan at beni kaybedecek Armanım biçmedim 10 gündür bu durum beni mahvedecek Senin her türün ayrı